Hi there, everybody. This is uh, Kyle Kruger with Kruger with a Dot. Uh, today, we, I'm interviewing a cosplayer today. Hello, I'm Zelda Mania Cosplay. Alright, so, um, um, Miss Zelda Mania, or, um, what should I call you? Uh, Zelda Maniac. It's Zel fine. Zelda Maniac, got it. So, um, how long have you been cosplaying? So, time-wise, it's been about five years, but after my first outfit, I took a very long hiatus. Um, so, I've only been back into the cosplay scene for a, almost a year. Like, uh, is there a reason you had hiatus? Was it because uh, life was busy? Yeah, I, uh, I made the costume my last year of high school. And then I went to college, and everything was so hectic, and I didn't have time or the money to make another costume. So, I just kept wearing the one costume to cons. Alright, so, uh, who do you cosplay as? Like, what characters do you cosplay as? So, my first costume was Skyward Sword Zelda, uh, but the one that I wear the most right now is Pearl from Steven Universe. I recently did a holiday version of her for the Holiday Matsuri Con, uh, but I had the normal Pearl beforehand. That's so nice. She's my favorite to cosplay. I love Pearl, <laughs> and I love wearing the costume. My only issue uh, is the arm socks, because I don't, I don't paint my arms for it. I made uh, arm socks out of tights, and I can't exactly eat in them, so I have to wear rubber gloves whenever I do that sort of thing. Oh. It makes me look like a neat freak, but at the same time, Pearl doesn't really like food, so it's kind of in character. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you also cosplay as Ladybug from uh, Miraculous... Yes, I did a masquerade version of Ladybug for also for Holiday Matsuri. That one was constructed in a lot less time uh, than Pearl was, but I love wearing that. It makes me feel cute. <laughs> all right, all right. So, what's it like the cosplay? Is it is it really fun? It is really fun. Um, I'm normally a very shy person, but when I cosplay, it makes it a lot easier to interact with people. So I have a lot of fun, and I have fun making the costumes, too. It's really nice to be able to have something you make work out well enough that you can wear it in public. Well, I, I cosplayed as one character once. Oh, cool. Which character? Fred from Big Hero 6. Nice. I used to have really long hair, so that way the cosplay can fit, but... I don't anymore because, you know, my mom had to tell me I can't have long hair anymore. Uh, yeah. My mom wouldn't let me dye my hair for the longest time. But then I went off to college and did it myself. <laughs> um, so I want to, so, um, so I also want to, so what, so what, so what made you a huge Zelda fan? Uh, so I grew up with the games and I played Zelda a lot. And I knew that my the first time I made an outfit for a character, it was going to be a Zelda character. I've spent so long, so many hours playing the games, and even on Super Smash Brothers, I made Zelda characters. All right, uh, who's your favorite, what's your favorite Zelda game? That's a hard one. Um, so... My favorite Zelda game is probably a toss-up between Ocarina of Time, obviously, and uh, Twilight Princess, actually. <laughs> My favorite is Majora's Mask. Twilight Princess. Uh, I just love Majora's Mask so much. You never played Majora's Mask? Do you... Uh, could you say that again? I can't really hear you. Uh, you never played Majora's Mask? Uh, what I meant was that uh, there's a Zelda game called Majora's Mask. Have you ever played it? It's going in and out. Um. Uh, 
Oh. Well, I, I can hear you. Okay, I can finally hear you again. It's probably an issue on my side. Uh, have you ever played My Favorite is Majora's Mask? Oh, uh, yeah, that one was fun. I love the whole creepy element to it. Like, Happy Mask Salesman, and just the art style. And Skull <laughs> Kid? Yeah. I want Skull Kid to be a playable character on Super Smash Brothers. I, uh, I actually downloaded a mod for Super Smash Bros. Brawl, and it, one of the outfits uh, that Toon Link has, it replaced it, and you could play as Skull Kid, and your final smash was having the moon crash down onto the stage. <laughs> that it sounds awesome. Great. Okay, so, since you're a Steven Universe fan, what are your favorite episodes of Steven Universe? I really like the episodes that have a lot of character and story development. So the whole uh, episode where Steven got taken, uh, well, Steven's dad got taken up to uh, the human zoo and Steven had to go save him. I really like that one. And I also like a lot of the recent episodes. Uh, I'm just, I like it when the story progresses and characters grow up or learn something well, um, my favorite Steven Universe episodes are, a lot of them are Mr. Greg, which is the one where Steven ta and Greg take Pearl on vacation to a hotel. It's I love that one as well. It's so nice. Uh, I, uh, oops, sorry. <laughs> it's, it's really nice. It's a really nice episode, and I really just enjoy it. Yeah, and I also love that Pearl got her own song in that episode. <laughs> What is... Okay, so what do you like about Pearl? Uh, I like her personality. Uh, she's... She'll, at some time, she's very logical. Um, and she's very faithful, like, to Rose and her family and the other gems. Uh, and she's also a technically-minded person, like, when she built the uh, rocket ship and the fighting robot and stuff like that, and... I just really like that. Uh, um, all right. Uh, I talked to a lot of Steven Universe fans about Pearl, and they like her a lot. And, like, I have this analyzical, analytical, like, I'm an, an I'm an analytical person, too. But it's more like I analytical shows from TV shows or characters. Right, so like I do that, and one of the things that I did was that I talked to a, a Steven Universe fan about Pearl's uh, one of Pearl's flaws, and that's is that she has a hard time accepting others. And and to be honestly fair, like one of the things was that was that was that uh, Pearl was. Uh, are you listening? Hello? Voice talk issues again. Oh, okay. Um, well, one of the things was that, uh, I said that, you see, Pearl, you see, during the earlier seasons, Pearl had a hard time accepting everybody, especially Ameth Amethyst, but she had no problems with Rose. And then I realized that one fan said, well... The difference between acceptance and worship is that when you worship somebody, you don't you don't accept somebody. You accept them way too much. You don't see any negativity with them. That is true. And yeah, she definitely worships Pearl. I mean, uh, Rose. 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 When you accept somebody, you like you accept them, but you know they're flawed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she doesn't seem to uh, recognize Rose's flaws very well. Maybe there can be an episode like that, because, like, during the fourth season, which I like, by the way, we don't get to see... There are episodes that focus on the gems, but it's more about Steven and his quest of friends, which is understandable, but you got to focus on the gems again. Yeah. I think there could be an episode where, like, 
where like where like Pearl finds out that she's done nothing but worship on Rose to the point that she feels like her love and her uh, that 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 her love for Rose has nothing but been worship. Maybe like and she feels bad for that because that's not the point of her her life. That would be a pretty interesting arc. I, it would be kind of cool to see her move on from that whole thing and come to the reality of the present more. I just feel like it would make sense to have a character like this realize that the reason why they cared about somebody was not because of acceptance, but rather worship. And Pearl needs to learn that learn not to worship somebody. Yeah. Especially if they're not going to stick with you and go off with somebody else. <laughs> Looking at you, Greg. Oh, so, um, so I want to ask you, so, um, so what do you like about, uh, so what do you, do you like the Powerpuff Girls? I do. Uh, I watched it a lot as a kid. Um, I used to, so when I was a kid, I didn't. Uh, live in America for most of my childhood, so I could only see certain types of shows, and Powerpuff Girls was one of the shows that I had access to because of my parents. They also loved it, so it was a big part of my childhood. Was it? Did you live in Canada? Uh, no, I lived in Europe because my dad was uh, military, so we moved a lot, and we just happened to be placed overseas. That's that's a lot. <laughs> it was interesting. So, um, so which Power Girl you cosplay as? Um, I haven't done a cosplay of one of the Powerpuff Girls yet, but I, so I'm in the UAH Cosplay Club. It's a club at my uh, my college, and we did a Powerpuff Girls themed event for superhero. <laughs> week, our homecoming week, and I was actually one of the villains. Um, I was the white cat from the episode Katmandu, and ah. some of our other members were Powerpuff Girls like Bubbles, Blossom, and Buttercup. That was nice. That, that sounds awesome. It was great. We, uh, we did a doggy kissing booth. We had a uh, local rescue humane society come and bring dogs, and we raised money for them. So we got to play around with dogs all day. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> okay, uh, so what what got you into Miraculous? So I just sort of found it randomly one day, and I watched the first episode, and I liked it, and then I kept watching more, and then I just got hooked into it, and it especially helped that the voice actor for Chat Noir is one of my favorite voice actors. Uh, you mean Spike Spencer? Uh, no, uh, for the English version of, um, Miraculous, it's, uh, he voices, like, Aaron Yeager and stuff like that as well. Oh, you mean from, uh, from, from Attack on Titan? Yeah. Oh, well, I'll, I was confused with another voice actor. Uh. I have a lot of favorite voice actors. <laughs> nice. Who are some of your favorites? Oh, oh, that that's an easy question. Uh, my favorite female voice actor actress is Laura Jill Miller. I'll tell you who she do does the voice of. Uh, she's the voice of Kari from the English dub of Digimon. Oh. She's uh, Juniper Lee, aka June from the Life and Time of Juniper Lee, which is a very underrated Cartoon Network show, and it's awesome. Hmm. She's the voice of Lisa from the Loud House. Interesting. And she's uh, the voice of Coco from the English dub of Zatch Bell. Oh wow! My favorite male voice actor is. It's sort of a. It's sort of a. It's sort of a. It's sort of a. You know, it was coming guess, but it's more of a. More of a. Oh, okay. We understand why you picked this guy. It's Scott McNeil. <laughs> uh, you better know him as a uh, Dinobot from Beast Wars and. Koga from uh, Inuyasha, the English dub. Oh. The English, yeah. the English dub of Inuyasha. He was once uh, Ace the Bat the Bat Hound on Crypto the Super Dog. Interesting. 
Interesting. Uh, he's one of the funniest voice actors ever. He's a really funny dude. I also met Steve Bloom once. That's awesome. Steve Bloom is an amazing dude. And I hope I work with him one day, because I want to be a voice actor one day. Awesome. Good luck with that. I'll be watching out for you. Um, so, alright. So, what is the reason you like about Twilight Princess? I really liked the art style, um, how it was more realistic, sort of. And I also liked that you got to fight with Zelda at the end. Like, that fight with Ganondorf was one of my favorite Ganondorf fights in the Zelda series. One Just of the my... whole multi-part, uh, going at him as a uh, wolf link and on horseback and then actually fighting him, like, sword fight. I loved it. One of my favorite things about, um, my friend Jared, uh, who used to work at a Hollywood video, uh, he said that, uh, one of the things he liked was that Link was actually a character not just an archetype for a character. Yeah, like, he had a whole backstory. He got to experience some of his town life before everything happened. And everyone in the town, like, had a personality and had their own story. And I liked that, too. <laughs> well, um, so do you have a, do you have an, uh, no, do you have, what, so what do you like about Ocarina of Time? Well, so, a part of it is the, definitely the nostalgia factor. Uh, it was my first Zelda game, so it's kind of hard to, like, get over that. Um, but I liked how, again, you got to interact with uh, Zelda herself a bit. Um, I enjoyed the Ganondorf fight. I enjoyed the whole going back in time aspect. So, like, you could go explore everything as an adult. But then you had to go back as a kid and explore it all over again because everything about the world changed. That's that's really cool. So uh, one of my my favorite character in uh, Steven Universe is Peridot. Peridot's awesome. She's a walking, talking Dorito. <laughs> yeah, space Dorito. I want to give if she was real life, I want to give her the biggest hug. Yeah. <laughs> She's definitely a huggable character. I'm more of a huggable person. <laughs> nice. I also love her relationship with Lapis and Steven and everybody else. Yeah. I I enjoyed it, how she was like villain at the beginning, but then begrudgingly stays on Earth and then grows to love it. There's there's actually a really cool comic book. It's a Lapis and a Paradox comic. Oh, what's it called? Um, it's called So Far. It takes place in a world where the gems are humans. Interesting. And um, and to be honestly fair, uh, it's about La it's about humanoid uh Peridot and humanoid Lapis, you know, trying to be a couple. We see like what they used to be when they when they weren't a couple, what they are now when they're a couple, everything else. That's cool. I'll have to go look it up. Uh, it's by um, it's by uh, one of my favorite. It's it's on one of the people I follow on Tumblr. Uh, her name um, uh, her name is um. Sorry about this. It's just I need to find find her. Uh, um, yeah, it's a really, 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 really good comic book. Uh, her name is a. Uh, D Demet, uh, Dement, O nine. Demet is D E M E N T O nine. Oh, found it. Awesome. I'll have to read that in a bit. <laughs> it's so. It's such an amazing comic. Yeah, and the pictures that Google brought up seem pretty cool. She, and she's such an awesome artist. I'm trying to get her on to my show, but it's going to be hard because. She's kind of a famous celebrity, I think. Uh, yeah. But I, I just, good luck. Uh, I I know. Good luck with that. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> and to be honestly fair, like I just really like how she writes Peridot and Lapis together. I like how she writes them that are in character with Lapis being, you know, this nice girl and with with. Paradox being this 
you know, being this really, you know, really intimidating and really logical person that just doesn't understand social cues a lot. <laughs> have you, uh, have you ever heard of Kelly Kirstein and For the Love of Claude, the cosplayers? Uh, no, I, I never heard of them. What, what are they like? Um, so they cosplay, uh, Peridot and Lapis, and they're really good at it. That's so awesome. I should check them out. Did... Oops, sorry. Uh, did what? Kelly, Kelly recently did a, um, winter-themed Lapis for the Holiday Matsuri Con. And it's so beautiful. I want to... Yeah, this person sounds so interesting. So, um... So, um... I, so, are you excited for a Miraculous Season 2? Uh, I'm I'm here. Are okay. you excited for Mar Miraculous season two? Yeah, yeah. Um, I've been trying to watch whatever's come out uh, so far that's been subtitled, but I haven't had much luck finding some of the stuff for the season two. Okay. But I'm really excited for when they introduce like Queen Bee and the Peon. <laughs> um. Okay. Um. So what's her name? Kelly something. Kelly. Um. The, the cosplayer you told me? My name's Kelly Kirstein. Oh, um, Kirstein. Curse. 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 Kirstein. 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 Uh, how do you spell that? Sorry. Um, so Kelly Kirsting, huh? Yes. How do you, uh, oh, how do you sorry. How do you spell it? K E L L Y. All right. And then um, the last name is K E R S T. K E R S T. S T. E I N. E I N. Thank you. Um, um, her last name might be K I R instead of K E R. Oh, K I R. Bad with spelling names. So, you just, I guess, try both. Oh, oh, well. Oh, thank you, and I will check on this person. Um, well. Oh, I see your cosplays. They look yeah. They look really nice. Her lapis. They are. She, her she her, so her lapis cosplay looks nice. Yeah, she puts so much effort into her stuff and she's like amazing. <laughs> Did you meet her one time? Yeah, I met her at Holiday Monstery and she was so nice. I've been following her for a while before that, so when I heard that she was going to Holiday Monastery, I'm like, okay, I need to make it my goal to find her and meet her. And so I did. I met her and Claude, and it was great. They're both super great people. You know what? I should follow this person, and I should interview... Maybe I should get her... Maybe I should interview her. Yeah, if you can get an interview with her, that'd be awesome. So, I also want... Uh, so, um... So, which Steven Universe character you want to hug the most, in your opinion? Uh, hmm, that's a hard question. I would love to hug Peridot because you, it's Peridot, uh, but probably Pearl. If she can get used to that. <laughs> yeah, it'd be a very awkward hug. I think my hug with Peridot would be more awkward because I'll be squeezing her. 
So tight. <laughs> She'd probably try and, like, after you squeezed her, one-up you, and then, like, death crush you. <laughs> I can actually do a Paradox voice. Really? Yeah, uh, it's not my best, but I try. You're gonna love it. it. Okay. <laughs> Log 857. The Steven here, here, told me about this fruit called a pineapple. I don't know what a pineapple is, but it sounds like something from one of his video games. <laughs> That's awesome. It sounds so mannish when you think about it. Yeah, but I mean, you have a man's voice, so it makes sense. I all, I also want, I also want, so um, so when I so, have you ever heard of a show called Ruby? Yeah. The uh, the last podcast you did that was uh, guy cosplays uh, Jean, right? Right. He was, yeah, uh, he was nice. You got your your original character as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, Ruby is a really great series. Yeah, I watched the most recent episode last night, and... Don't tell anybody. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> That's something they need to watch for themselves. Um, I, I think the reason why I like Ruby is because it's such a great series, and it's like... One of those shows that makes you feel better inside. Yeah. It really makes you feel for the characters, too. For example, um, so, like I said, I made a character named, uh, I wrote a character named Derek. Yeah. He's Weiss's brother. He's his other brother, which I made. Ooh, yeah, I can see where he'd get issues from. Well, his issues are more of he was rejected by his own family, he lost his friends. Well, all of his friends got killed on the same day. Oh wow. Um see this was through see this was see, this was before Wife became a well developed character and uh she kinda gave up on Derek when she was little. Hmm. And Derek has ha has had not a very good relationship with Wise. In fact, the only person that cared about Derek, other than his friends, was Winter. And Winter had to become his mother, mostly his m this second mother to him. He lives. I could see Winter doing that. He lives with Winter in. I, I made this city up. It's a combination of San Francisco and Seattle with a little bit of technology. Oh, cool. And uh, they have a maid named Chan named Shin. She's uh, Chinese. Well, we well we don't know if we don't know if there's well there is race in Ruby, but we don't know the exact culture. Maybe it's different from our culture. Mm -hmm. You get what I mean? Yeah. So Derek has had a hard time has a hard time with Weiss, mostly because she. In fact, it, when when season five's over, I'm gonna try to make my story connect to the rest of the season. Interesting. And when Derek sees his new friends, and Weiss and his friends at first, like he he like he he gets along with it, with Weiss's friends except Weiss because, you know, like Weiss tries to tries to say like, look, I know you and me we don't get along and. And I know it's my fault. And, like, Derek just doesn't listen. Derek is... Well, Derek is a nice person. He's nicer. But he does have an anger issue. And most of that comes from losing his friends and being rejected by his own family. Yeah, that that would be terrible. And plus, you kind of don't blame him for, for, for not liking Weiss. Yeah. <laughs> Ice. There, there are scenes where he gets along with the others, but just not with Weiss. And there's actually, there, I, I talked to a friend named Phoenix. Uh, his, her name, his name's Phoenix, and he told me that if you're gonna have dynamic, you know, you gotta make them understandable. You know, like you gotta make both Weiss and Derek more understandable to their sides of the of this whole fight with them. Mm -hmm. So there's a scene where like there's the argument, and like Derek, and like Derek, and like Derek, like mentions every. 
like Derek like just scolds Wise and says that you're not a good person, you'll never change, you only care about yourself and your stupid money, and why do you care about and why do you care about people now since now? He even wow. in, he even said he he even says <clears throat> he even says this says this to well, like the whole fight is in front of their friends. Well, Weiss's friends, and like with Derek, with why Weiss's friends becoming Derek's new friends. It's complicated. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. And like why? And like Derek goes like this. You know why, Millie? Millie, you know why she she didn't like the Faunuses? I'm gonna tell you why. Because she blames them for why why Dad doesn't get along with her. That's the reason why you don't why you why you hate them. It's not because of what they did. It's because you just don't... It's just because you just want to make mistakes in your life. And, like, Ruby tries to defend her. And, like, Der and like Ruby says, Derek, everybody makes mistakes. And do, you and do you know what Derek says? It's actually really harsh, but true. He says this, I spilled my juice today. Hey, that was a mistake. She blamed a race of people for why her dad... For why our dad hates us. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That was quite harsh. But you kind of you kind of see where Derek is coming from with this. Yeah. Like, like think about it in your shoes. If you had a sister that didn't care about you, would you get mad at her? Most definitely. But Wise has changed now. In fact, the whole story is about Wise having to deal with somebody that doesn't accept her accept her change at all, and she doesn't know how to deal with this person. So it's more gives why some development that development that that if she is going to change people's minds, they have to they have to trust her. And Winter has to tell Derek that Weiss has changed, but he but she needs to understand that it's Derek's choice at the end of the day, not hit not hers, to make Derek get along with Weiss. Yeah. I can totally see Winter become this voice of reason to Derek. Yeah, I feel like in the household with uh, Weiss and her brother and Winter, I think Winter is definitely the more voice of reason character out of the three of them, at least to start with. Right, and look, right, right, and, and, and like, and like, when, like, here's a, a scene where Weiss does tell Derek she does regret what she does. In fact, we maybe we I can have like a moment where Wise regrets everything she does to the point that she hates her old self. She hates what she's done in life. Because and also Derek could say that well, Derek could say, um like for this, like like to Weiss that he would say what like you never earned anything in your life. You were given everything. The only time you don't work for anything is when you're a huntsman, but that's it. All you do is complain and whine and get everything you want, while me and everybody else have to work hard. That's very much the it. Just so, I want to ask you another question. Sorry about the whole story I rambled on. Hello? Um, you there? Sorry. It's the... Oh, you're, you're fixing the thing, right? Um, sorry, sorry about, sorry if it took I long to tell think you. think it might be better? Yeah, now. it's better. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah, no. I, I don't know why it's acting up today, but... Oh well. Well, technology. Well, so well, so so. Do you love any other shows? So, what shows do you like, like other than, other than uh, Steven Universe and Miraculous and Ruby? So, um, is there any other shows you like? Um, 
So, have you watched Star vs. the Forces of Evil? Yeah, a lot of people have told me about that, and it's such a funny series. I watched some anime, uh... What animes do you watch? That again? Uh, what animes do you watch? Like, uh, what animes do you watch? My computer, man. I don't know what's going on with it. Oh. So, uh, what animes do you watch? Uh, recently I've watched Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Um... I've watched, well, I'm right now I'm watching Love Tyrant, I've watched a little bit of Chunubio, I've watched Sword Art Online, um, Attack on Titan, and quite a few others, it's just hard to remember names. I love Cowboy Bebop. Watched? I've heard of that, um, that's one of the ones that's on my list to watch, and along I with love Jojo. One Piece. I love One Piece. I've watched some of that, uh, I think I watched, like, 40 or 50 episodes of One Piece. One of the characters' names is Nico Robin, and I want to, and I want to find a co a person that cosplays her so I can become best friends with that person. <laughs> nice. Um, I love Star For vs. the Forces of Evil. Yeah. You know what one of my favorite jokes is? What? Spider with a top hat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe you should cosplay as a spider with a top hat. That would be interesting. I've seen people cosplay as a spider from Undertale, so... Maybe you can Cos cosplay as a, spi a, a spider lady that's steampunk, and she has a steampunk top hat. That could work. I'll have to look into doing... We will call it... That. You will call this cosplay Madam Steam... Steam Spider. <laughs> I've got so many cosplays on my list to do. I just keep adding to it. I also wanted to give you a hug if, well, if we weren't in the computer and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. I just get so, you know, happy and stuff. That's perfectly fine. I want to say that you've been a great guest today. Well, thank you. You've been a great host. And I promise you that one day. When your computer is fixed, we will do... I don't know if we'll do another one, though. So, that's a question for another day. But, yeah. I, but I will say that I want I want to extend my handship of friendship with you. And I will extend my hand as well. Yay! We're friends now. <laughs> Hooray. Well, I'm going to go to Otacon Vegas in a few days. Oh, nice. Have fun with that. And I'm going to meet my friends Bobby and Lexi and... Her sisters and and other friends, and I will make new friends. Awesome! I'm going to Comic Con in I think two weeks. Which so, Comic Con? Uh, it Comic Con like K A M I. Oh, it's in, uh, Comic Con. Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> so is it? A, so what's the event's theme? Um, it's a lot of anime, but it's sort of a mix of everything. Like, there's video games and uh, TV shows and movies. Do you like Pokemon? Yeah, I like Pokemon. Teddy Ursa's my favorite normal type Pokemon. Oh, yeah. Teddy Ursa's adorable. And you know who... Magikarp's useless. Oh, I love Magikarp. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, but it's just that... It's just that I feel like this is the one, the one Pokemon that maybe the original creator created the least, like, put it the least elements. Yeah. Until it, it turns into Gyarados. Which one? Shiny or normal? 
Uh, either. Um, but my favorite Pokemon is actually C Scizor. You know, the the, the, the red bug uh, with with scissors? Yeah. I'm a big, cool. I'm a big fan. Hey, if you ever see a Nico Robin cosplayer, say, tell her I said hi. <laughs> Alright. Nico Robin's my favorite. I'll try and get a photo if I find one, and I can send it to you. Yay! Yay! <laughs> um, so this is Kruger with a Thought, everybody. I want to say thank you to Zelda M Maniac Cosplay for doing this f with me. And I'd like to say thank you for having me. You can call me anything you want. Uh, alright, I'll, I'll call you Kruger. Alright, thank you so much. Have a great day, everybody.